good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have another fantasy booking style video for you guys. And you guys know one of the biggest pay-per-views of the summer. Actually, it is. It is the biggest pay-per-view of the summer. It's one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year, right? SummerSlam coming around. Usually one of the better cards. It's like a second WrestleMania, some would probably call it. You know, you got the Royal Rumble, you got WrestleMania, you got SummerSlam, and you got Survivor Series. That's your big four pay-per-views. They usually put, you know, their best storylines, their best matches, their best foot forward when booking, when preparing for these shows. And this year, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, looking into this card, I'm not that excited for it. There are a couple things here and there that I'm, I am excited for and I'm actually looking forward to, but for the most part, this card really doesn't scream SummerSlam. You know, I'm sure they're going to add a couple more matches possibly to the card, but as it stands right now, there are only seven matches on the card. So at this point, we are going to fantasy book what we have so far. Now, I may even do a video where I give you what my, what my SummerSlam card would be if I was at the head of WWE, what I would have booked, you know, weeks and months ago, leading up to SummerSlam. That'd probably be a cool video idea. But right now, today, we're going to take exactly what we got, right? We're going to take the matches that we have on the card, and I'm going to fantasy book those matches, where we're going from there, how I would do it, everything in between, like that. That, that. That's what we're doing here today. So that being said, guys, let's go ahead and dive into this card and just get everything out of the way and fantasy book this show of WWE SummerSlam 2020. Now, before we get into it, I know that the Street Profits are taking on Angel Garza and Andrade for the Raw Tag Team Championships. I think that the Raw Tag Team Champions Street Profits really have not done anything since winning the championships. I honestly feel like Andrade and Angel Garza could do much more with it. I, I know that I think Angelo Dawkins, I think he just had his first kid, so I think that, you know, maybe he wants to take some time off there. I don't know, but I do know that I think Angel Garza and Andrade would be better for them right now. You know, with the Street Profits, we got all the golfing and the mini games and all that stuff with the Viking Raiders. Huge waste of time. Wasn't, wasn't very invested in that. Even though I love them to death, I honestly feel like them stepping away from the tag title would be better for them unless you want to keep it going and build them from here but if it were my if it were up to me I would put it on Andrade and Angel Garza and give them some some much needed momentum and have them lead that division right now but now that we've covered that guys let's dive into the rest of SummerSlam 2020 all right guys so starting out first with our women's championship matches you guys know that Sasha Banks is in a rematch with Asuka and I love Asuka to death but we still have not gotten our Bailey versus Sasha Banks match right so in this matchup I think we should have a damn good football game I think we should have a Bailey run in. We should have some good drama in this matchup, but ultimately, Sasha Banks should retain her Raw Women's Championship. From there, Asuka would go down. You know, you could get her later on, but we are focused on our main storyline here. We want Bayley and Sasha to be on a head-on-head -head collision for Survivor Series is what I'm thinking. Somewhere in between now and Survivor Series, they're going to lose their Women's Tag Team Championships, and uh, they are going to meet up, right? So you know that Bayley does have a SmackDown Women's Championship match with the winner of the SmackDown Battle Royal. I think Stephanie McMahon has announced that there is going to be like a triple brand SmackDown Battle Royal taking place. The winner of that Battle Royal will go on to face Bayley at SummerSlam for the SmackDown Women's Championship. So whoever wins that matchup will go on to take on Bayley. I don't know who that's going to be, but uh, they're going to lose. They're going to lose whoever it is. I think that's the best way to book it. Both of these women will retain their championships and we will uh, start the beginning process of them losing their tag titles and then head-on-head -head collision, championship for championship at Survivor Series is how I would do it. And even if you have a good breakup. You, you could even have it where since they'll no longer be tag team champions, they will be on separate brands, right? So from there that will put the cracks in the foundation. They won't see each other as often on Raw and SmackDown. And they're going to break up. They'll break up because they'll lose the tag titles. They won't see each other as often. The tension will be there. And then we'll have Bayley versus Sasha at Survivor Series. You could even have champion versus champion for both titles or not. Don't really care, but that's what I want to see. That's how I would book it. There is your women's championship matches. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty damn football good to me. Moving forward guys, we have the United States Championship, right? We got Apollo Crews, you know, the U.S. Champion, who's actually been kind of on fire to be honest with you, right? I mean, ever since winning the championship, he, he had some good victories. He's defeated multiple guys week in and week out on Monday Night Raw. You got MVP Bobby Lashley. Let me get let me get the third member. And Shelton Benjamin, right? Together, they are known as the Hurt Business. So, these three guys are running around on Monday Night Raw. They're pretty much a main feature, you know. I think Shelton Benjamin is the 24-7 champion at the moment. I could be wrong about that I, it's hard to keep up man i mean people rolling up people uploading to youtube you know anybody can be champion at any moment but as of now i think he's the 24 7 champion but since they have been running rough shot on monday night raw i don't think it is a good look for these guys if they lose again here to apollo cruz which i think is also bs because apollo cruz won the championship he beat mvp again i think he beat him a couple times possibly he may have lost and then beat him but he beat him already so i hate that we have to have another championship match here after apollo cruz has been built up, but 
I think MVP and the Hurt Business are going to win the U.S. Championship, putting the championship over on MVP, so him and Shelton will be champion, and Bobby Lashley, I guess, will be the muscle of the group. He's the biggest guy, and I think that's a good role for him. Very unfortunate for Apollo Crews, but if I'm booking this matchup, I mean, if you're going to book this matchup right here, you have to have the Hurt Business win, simply because they're the big-time faction heels over there on Monday Night Raw right now, besides the Retribution or whatever the hell those are, the pieces of trash. But I think yeah, that's how you have to book it. I don't want it to be that way, but if I'm if I'm booking it and I, I've already got this match on the card, I can't have Apollo Crews defeat them again once I built them up as this big bad faction on Monday Night Raw. So I would have the Hurt Business defeat Apollo Crews. Again, not how I want it. You know, I don't want it that way. That's just the way it's going to be booked here because, uh, you know, I think it would ultimately make them kind of weak if that were to happen. So next up, guys, we have the Monday Night Messiah, right? We got Seth freaking Rollins taking on Dominic Mysterio. I'm sure that Rey Mysterio will probably get involved in this matchup somehow. Buddy Murphy will be in that corner as well. So the Monday Night Messiah taking on Dominic Mysterio. Now coming into this matchup, guys, not really looking forward to it. I know that Dominic has been somewhat impressive in his in-ring stuff. You know, he's hit some frog splashes. He's looked good in some moments. But in a full-fledged wrestling match, how will he do here in this one-on-one -on -one match with Seth Rollins? You know, he is a very experienced competitor. Seth Rollins is probably the best guy you could put him in the ring with. Outside of maybe Randy Orton, AJ Styles, somebody that's an in-ring veteran, knows what the hell they're doing. Dominic is in good hands in the hands of Seth Rollins coming into this matchup. Now we know that Seth Rollins beat the absolute hell out of Dominic on Monday Night Raw with that kendo stick. I mean, my God, if you guys saw the photos, he beat the dog crap out of this kid. So he beat the hell out of him. He's got welts and cuts and bruises. And you know, a father is not going to let that happen. So I expect Rey Mysterio to get involved. I would definitely, ha I'd have Buddy Murphy and Rey Mysterio get involved. You know, some good shenanigans back and forth in this thing. Now again, I'm not big on this matchup. I just don't think that Dominic versus Seth Rollins is a SummerSlam matchup. I would like to see something else. I would have liked to seen Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins move on from each other. Like, eye for an eye, man, that's the end of a feud, you know? I feel like that was clearly a match that could have been end of the feud. I don't think you needed anything else. But here we are in this match, and I think that after that brutalization of Dominic that we got on Monday Night Raw, we have to have a stipulation in this match. I know we got the eye for an eye, but Dominic has to have some way to get back at Rollins. Like, it has to, right? I mean, that's just the way it goes. This thing needs to be extreme rules. This thing needs to be hardcore. This thing needs to be unsanctioned. It needs to be something. They got to do something because after that brutalization of Dominic, I don't think it is possible to just have a regular singles match. It just wouldn't be right, right? I mean, he beat the hell out of Dominic. He tied him up in the ropes. Rey Mysterio is going to be good and pissed off. You got to have some sort of stipulation here. So I would definitely book it as a non-sanctioned match or a hardcore match or something of that nature. And I'd have these guys go the limit and I would have Rey Mysterio help Dominic win over Seth Rollins just to get the payback on Rollins. You could possibly even write him off TV for a while. But I think that is probably the best thing for it because uh, it's not going to look good for Rollins to lose clean to Dominic and it's not going to look that great for Dominic to get his ass beat by the kendo stick and then lose again to Rollins at SummerSlam. So I think Rey Mysterio and Dom helping together, weapons involved, putting down the Monday Night Messiah, that would be the way to go. But that's probably how I would book it. Just, just simply because I don't think, first of all, if it were me, this matchup wouldn't be taking place. But since it is taking place, again, I'm taking the card that we are given by WWE and just kind of running with it and doing my own thing with it and how I would book it with what we have been given by them. So I would have Dominic and Rey double team and, and band together father and son to take out the Monday Night Messiah and get a victory with Dominic there and get the payback for him over uh, over Seth Rollins. So that would be what I would say for this matchup. And now getting into our final two, guys. We got the two big matchups, our championship matches. Starting out first, guys, let's go with Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. Now, this is a matchup that I'm very much looking forward to simply because these are two of my favorite guys on Monday Night Raw. Drew and Randy Orton in their roles have been perfect for each other. I think that it's a perfect babyface versus a perfect heel. Uh, Randy Orton has been on an absolute tear ever since his feud with Edge, obviously, man, the, the promos and the punt kicks and the evil has just been seeping out of Randy Orton, and I, I dude, I don't want to say this, but I feel like Randy Orton needs to win the WWE Championship. You know, I, I just can't, I could totally see it happening. I could see Randy Orton winning the championship, and then Edge coming back at the Royal Rumble, winning the Royal Rumble, and we could have Randy Orton versus Edge 3 at WrestleMania 37 for the WWE Championship. That is, uh, that's what I'm thinking, man. I mean, that's, that's where I think they're going, and it's kind of a damn shame, because 
because Drew McIntyre has been fantastic. I think the only way Drew wins is probably by some outside force, maybe a return, maybe Christian comes out and helps, or maybe I doubt Edge comes back that soon. I just don't see him helping Drew McIntyre win. It's p completely possible. I just don't see that taking place. Ric Flair's obviously gone for now. Maybe Big Show gets involved. That would be absolutely horrific, but I would not put it past WWE. But if I were fantasy booking it, I'd probably have somebody cost Drew. I'd probably have somebody cost Drew, have him get punt kicked with the ref not looking, and uh, you keep the, you know, you keep Drew strong because he took a punt kick to the skull. You'd have Randy Orton with a punt kick. He'd win the WWE Championship, and then that's where you would go from there. I don't want to see Drew McIntyre's reign in, but Randy Orton has been on absolute fire. I mean, this is one of those matches that are completely unpredictable. I know this isn't a predictions video, but this is a matchup that's hard to predict because both guys are probably the most on-fire superstars across WWE right now. So this is a very tough one to, to book because you have a top heel and you have a top baby face. It's just kind of where you want to go from here. And I guess if I were booking it, I would have either Dolph Ziggler or, or somebody like that come out and, and cost Drew McIntyre, punt kick to Drew McIntyre. You could have him go off and do something. I, I'm not... I mean, it's difficult, bro. It is totally difficult. But I think I'd put the WWE Championship on Randy Orton. It's been... it's it, This massive heel turn and all these things that he's been doing is leading to this moment for him. And I think I would put the championship on Randy Orton and I would book it until, I guess, the Royal Rumble where Edge would return and he'd return from injury after Randy Orton put him on the shelf and you got all those matches they've had before and you got the history and you'd have Edge versus Randy Orton for WrestleMania. Not my favorite matchup, but I think that would be absolutely beautiful to see. Or maybe you could do the opposite. Maybe you could have Edge return, help Drew McIntyre defeat Randy Orton, and then uh, go forward with your Randy Orton versus Edge match for, uh, you know, their final date. But I did hear on the rumor mill that Randy Orton versus Edge is already booked for WrestleMania 37, so I don't know. But there you go. I gave you two different scenarios with Drew winning and Randy winning, but it both leads to them both looking strong still because uh, it would probably not be a clean victory because both guys are so hot, you want to keep them looking good, but there you go. And for the main event, guys, we have the Blue Universal Championship match, a matchup that I had a ton of fun fantasy booking last time when we were talking about Extreme Rules, but we have the Fiend Bray Wyatt taking on Braun Strowman for the Blue Universal Championship, and you guys know what took place at Extreme Rules, and we know what's been happening on Friday Night Smackdown with Alexa Bliss and The Fiend, and I, I haven't watched the last few weeks, but I did catch up a little bit, and it looks like Alexa Bliss is, is kind of seducing The Fiend, and The Fiend's trying to ignore it. Maybe we're going to get a really cool storyline where, where they're in cahoots and they take over Smackdown. I think that'd be absolutely excellent. So how I would see this taking place is if this is what we're doing, I think that this is the time to put the Blue Universal title on Bray Wyatt, on The Fiend. So this is probably how I would go. I'd have these guys go to the limit. I'd have, you know, uh, Braun Strowman has power slammed The Fiend. He cannot put him down. It's just not working. The Fiend has tried everything he can. Mandible Claw's been broken. He's not, you know, Braun Strowman is not folding. So uh, I guess Braun Strowman's loading up The Fiend, trying to put the final nail in the coffin, and out comes Alexa Bliss. Dark hoodie. She's got her dark clothing on, and her and The Fiend have aligned. We have Alexa Bliss aligning with The Fiend, and we get a good character change, a good dark makeup, maybe even dark hair. I don't know. You could do some really creative things with this, but Alexa Bliss would align with The Fiend. Alexa Bliss could even seduce The Fiend, and so under Alexa Bliss's seduction, The Fiend would defeat Braun Strowman. Maybe even Alexa Bliss could distract Braun Strowman because, you know, it's like, holy hell, they're in cahoots together. What the hell's going on here? Cost Braun Strowman the championship. I mean, that doesn't necessarily make The Fiend look good, but at the same time, it's a pretty cool fantasy booking idea and would make for an interesting story that you could do. I did first pitch the idea before Alexa Bliss was even seen. I had an idea of The Fiend, you know, kind of putting a Braun under this spell and being like the puppeteer, the puppet master, taking over Braun Strowman and him being his heavy lifter. And you know what? It'd be kind of cool if he could, maybe them together could mind control Braun and then the championship would go on The Fiend and then they'd be a new heel faction. I don't I don't know. I'm just kind of messing around here like, like a new ministry. But I don't know. I, I love characters like The Fiend because you could do so many cool things with it. You could even get Firefly Funhouse Bray involved. Have Alexa Bliss on the Firefly Funhouse. Have him, you know, like kind of anxious around Alexa Bliss and like even more scared of Alexa Bliss than The Fiend. And I think manager roles and stuff like this is better for Alexa Bliss. I don't think she has to be 80 time women's champion. I think she can fit into this role nicely. But uh, that's how I do it. I've had, I'd, I would have Braun Strowman lose the Universal Championship to The Fiend with the help of Alexa Bliss and their little mind control games and them being together. And you could do some really creative stuff with it. I think that would be absolutely badass. But I think that is it for SummerSlam. You know, not the most creative stuff going on. I, I, I honestly, I think my Extreme Rules fantasy booking was better, but I do like to take what WWE gives us and try to put my own spin on it. Maybe I will do a future video this week or next 
next week where I will fantasy book SummerSlam uh, way before now. Like, take what I would have thought would have been a great SummerSlam card and give it to you guys and see what you guys think about that. But that is all we got for today, guys. I'm sure more matches will be added to the card, but as of right now, this is what we got, so I just went with what I got. But let me know what you think of my fantasy booking ideas down in the comment section below. I could totally do better. You know, I've definitely had better ideas and booking ideas in the, in the past, but that's all I got for you today, guys. Let me know what you think. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.